Good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to the first meeting of the Board of Trustees. This is May 2nd, um, 2022. I'll call the meeting to order at about 5 o'clock. I uh, would accept a motion to approve the minutes of uh, April 18, 2022. Uh, I so move. A motion and a second. Any further discussion regarding those minutes? Who's the second? I am. Okay. It may not be a big deal that I said that I reported something, uh, a trivial fact, although I wasn't in the meeting. We got it. Thank okay, you. Got it? Thank okay. you. I, H2, line 2, the letter T is missing, went to Fishers instead of went O Fishers. Oh, goodness Fishers. gracious, thank you. Oh, the went O. Mm, went O. Doesn't sound bad. <laughs> Any other amendments? Uh, not I. All right, hearing none, may we vote, please. Uh, Mr. Oh. Beecher? Yes. Ms. Moyer? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Thank you. Would you like to take a, attendance? I did. Oh, you did? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I got it. Just want to make sure you it. And now I entertain a motion to pay bills in the amount of $48,056.46, $48, comprised uh, general fund $12,380.04. Fire fund twenty nine thousand five hundred ninety six dollars eleven cents. Cemetery fund one thousand two hundred fifty five dollars four cents. EMS billing twenty three hundred forty six dollars and thirteen cents. And road and bridge twenty four <coughs> hundred seventy nine sixteen cents. Is there a motion to approve? I so move. We have a motion and a second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion regarding payment of these accounts? Hearing none, may we vote, please? Ms. Moyer. Yes. Mr. Hauser? Yes. Mr. Mewcher? Yes. Correspondence for the period, we have a Green County Board of Health uh, announcement. We have a request for a uh, YSMT rent relief, which we'll review in the new business. Uh, VZA training offer um, from one of our lawyers, one of our many lawyers now, we have some of you. Uh, email regarding SB 324, we'll discuss that under new business also. OTA main training options, BZA member announced retirements, AR, ARPA nonprofit grant program, and one Ohio Foundation Board of Candidates meeting April 25th. Um, obviously that's passed. We do have one for, for the day after tomorrow also, but <clears throat> Foundation Board announcement, uh, that's their Foundation Board announcement. Regional Planning and Coordinating Commission April 26th meeting announcement. Underground cable conduit loosened along Grinnell Road. We had that as a um, <coughs> as a um, uh, comment through our website, I think the second ever, but we forwarded it along to the county engineer because as we all know, every bridge in the county is owned by the county engineer. Uh, FEMA GO system update, Attorney Sloan leaving Dinsmore and Scholl, um, UAN training, we'll have to talk about him somewhere. Yep. Uh, UAN training session, fund status, revenue status, appropriation status for today. Any further correspondence in or out? <clears throat> Public comment on agenda items. Any member of the public here would like to comment on anything? Or wanting to add something for later in the meeting? Or wanting to add something for later in the meeting? Those things that you read down, you meet on any other comments on any of those things? That was just correspondence. It, it, that's correspondence. But uh, other than that, it can, it can be on anything that's, that's we can bring up this evening. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll wait. Okay. Um, the BZA training offer, what's mm -hmm. that? Is that open to only BZA members? What is that? Uh, that was a piece of correspondence. I didn't read it all, but that from uh, the attorney. Jennifer Huber, she offered to come down and do training for either the BZA or Planning Commission. Might we talk about that in the zoning inspector's report? The, I don't certainly yet. Yeah, sure. No, we. I said we can put it in wherever we want. And that's as good a place as any, I guess. Okay. Uh, 
Okay, fire department report. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me, since the last meeting, we've had 27 EMS incidents, six of which were in that venture, and 12 fire incidents, uh, one of which are back. Uh, Medicaid 2, the newer of the two, has uh, received its new tires and then decided it needed new front tire rods and rear brakes. So, uh, <laughs> I think it's okay now. So, about $2 to $2,800. Yeah. Okay. That place was re recommended to me. Are we not using um, and now ex trustee Houston? Oh, Brian Farm? Brian Farm. Uh, he really only works on the big ones and he's definitely not time. So. Oh, really? He's a farmer too. Yeah, we used him when we had that emergency problem with Medicaid 81 where it had some mm -hmm. psychotic diesel emergency. Mm -hmm. But he was. It was great to work with, but I mean, it was pretty good. Was pretty good so. Um, so that's in service. Yeah, that was medics. Is this the place? I'm sorry, I didn't mean oh, that. Is this the place that Lamar had recommended? I don't know if Lamar did. Fisher, was, was that? Oh, yeah, yeah, talk about it. I know the village takes stuff down there. And they treated it right for some of those. Yeah. Really right. That's why I recommended it. Yeah, Federal Township and Zena Township. Was the place yeah. Lamar recommended or not? No, that was the one in Springfield. They were way No, yeah, I know, but I thought there was another. We talked about fish for yeah. the two weeks. I didn't have our stuff to that time. He was right with us. I mean, right? Mm -hmm. Great. Well, yeah, well, I, I looked over the bill. I mean, it was a lot of parts. A lot of parts. A fair amount of labor, but it's not, yeah. it's not cheap work on those big guys. Did they, no. line, did they line it up too? Yeah. yeah. He's got that machine to do the bigger stuff. Yeah, I mean, he's done a couple things for us so far, and uh, you know, see those smaller vehicles, and it's in the town for smaller mm -hmm. vehicles, so, and the village, I know, take, and you take stuff there, so everyone seems happy. Mm -hmm. And they do, like, uh, cool modifications, so we could get some chrome grills, and lower lower the medic down, maybe, some neon lights. A lot of chrome. <laughs> and they turned it over fairly fast for us. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and they're easy to get stuff in, they, they had that in within three minutes of the call, so mm -hmm. that, was, that was great. Yeah, okay. Which helped us through the period where we had no ambulances available for 24 hours. But, uh, Please, let's not, let's not bring that up again. Yeah, uh, well, that isn't in the report. Wouldn't it be notable that... Therefore, I cannot speak English. We had <laughs> 24 hours with no ambulance? It was less than 24, but... Okay. Oh, I you know. You, it also was a day when we had a lot of calls. It just happened to be on the shift, too, actually, so... Uh, yeah, and, and we survived. It worked out well. But when that happens, you let your your neighbor in oh, gotcha. snow and oh, yeah. there's backup procedures when this happens. Yeah, we had, I mean, we were able to respond to the calls, obviously. Uh, but we're just going to transport anyone who needed it. So if transport was needed, then we requested mutual aid. So we had Houston come in twice. Yeah. And the other calls were, and uh, Mad River Township came in for one that was in that township, like way up on Armstrong. And Cedarville handled the crash for us. Mm -hmm. so, and we got all those calls, I think, like five calls within an hour and a half or something. Yeah. <coughs> and then nothing. Um, and then the park came the next day for Medicaid 1, and then it was a little bit of all, and that's all good to go. So. Did, did we get a, uh, uh, what do you call it when you check out the stars and you <laughs> <laughs> an analysis with it? Probably should have. I'm sure I could get one. I'm wearing nail springs. <laughs> that was a joke. Yeah, especially $200. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, got a resolution in your packet? Resolution number 2022 something? 19. <laughs> Thank you. To reclassify volunteer Kevin and Meter to part time status to help fill shifts and that type of thing. All right, we would do have resolution 2219. Uh, it reads, whereas a continuing need exists to maintain proper staffing within the fire rescue department, and whereas current volunteer firefighter EMT Gavin Van Meer has acquired and demonstrated all the necessary qualifications to serve in the capacity of firefighter slash EMT for the fire rescue department in a part-time basis, and whereas Chief Altman has recommended the reclassification of this employee, and whereas funds are available for the purpose within the fire department's 22, uh, operating budget. Now, therefore, be it resolved that Galvin Van Meter shall be reclassified from volunteer 
two part-time status within the fire rescue department effective May 2, 2022. Is there a motion to adopt resolution 2219? Yes. We have a motion. Is there a second? I'll second. A motion and a second. Any further discussion regarding this resolution? Hearing none, may we vote please. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Weecher? Yes. Ms. Moyer? Yes. Thank you. Um, in the crazy way that the world works, uh, Lieutenant Klein has secured the donation of 20 new mattresses uh, from Tempur-Pedic Corporation um, to be split between us and Zena Township. Um, they have a program that donates mattresses to charities and to fire departments. Um, Fairborn Fire had benefited from that, and uh, Chris heard about it. So he went through seven drafts of a letter, emailed it, and within two hours they had said, okay, we'll donate. So never been anywhere that donates anything that quickly <laughs> or easily. So big thanks to tempur We should have those in about six to eight weeks. Cool. And big thanks to Chris for getting that taken care of. Yeah, um, absolutely. And, uh, yeah. Yep. And uh, that was facilitated through the Firefighters Association using the 501c3. So. Uh, and Dan, you uh, be on the lookout in a couple of months for any um, twin size mattresses that might be lying again around Township <laughs> Roads. <laughs> Can't figure we toss around a Kyle somewhere by the Township line. I'm not worried about you, I'm worried about Zenia Township. <laughs> <laughs> They got a lot of township to hide mattresses on. That's yeah, true. <laughs> if you if you include Cedar Creek, so. <laughs> um, and then last but not least, at the last or two, I can't remember. Last meeting or two days ago, I notified that the treadmill had been briefly repaired and then decided to start shutting itself off randomly, um, which is not a good thing when you're trying to run on a <laughs> treadmill. Um, G and G was contacted. They uh, diagnosed the problem as a circuit board problem and of course because the treadmill is the goal to be 10 plus years old we don't have those parts anymore so uh, got a quote attached for a new treadmill um, which is allegedly firefighter proof with the seat uh, well we did the other one for like 10 and a half years so it was a pretty good lifespan on the treadmill um, this particular unit was you chose it or they recommended it this is they gave me like five different recommendations and this was the best one and also conveniently the best price. Mm -hmm. uh, these are on state contracts, so that's one of the prices. The MSRP is one thing and mm -hmm. uh, it's whatever it was, fifty dollars cheaper. The state contract. And they have them in stock. Because mm -hmm. uh, the non stock units can be up to uh, the supply chain, I know. They're out in the middle of the like Pacific somewhere. Twenty two weeks on a trip this, so when do we talk about how long does it take to get a new medic? Hey! <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I don't know if he told you the sticker price on that later. Yes, <laughs> thank you very much for my <laughs> day. Four um, more gray hairs that Chris got to cut. Uh, any question regarding the acquisition of this treadmill through the, by the trustees? Seems as, it saves, <clears throat> excuse me, seems as we decided or we offered to pay for it through the board as opposed to through fire funds. I haven't remembered that. Did we talk about that last? We talked was, about that a few yeah. ago, back when it was not working. Uh, Still I, is not I working. I move that we... Uh, we'll hold the phone. Okay. <laughs> you have a motion? Uh, I, <coughs> I move that we authorize purchase of this. Okay. Is there a second? Second. We're going to second any further discussion regarding that motion. Aaron, may we vote please? Mr. Meacher. Yes. Uh, Ms. Moyer? Yes. Mr. Hoster? So, yes. Thank you. Moyer, the last one out. We, this is our second. Because we, we, what was our first term? 2001, I think, when we got the, we got a federal grant in 2001 to buy yeah, our right. initial yeah. allotment of fitness equipment. Um, mm -hmm. And that first treadmill lasted probably nine or ten years. Mm -hmm. And they say, you know, five years is a good lifespan on a treadmill that gets different people, you know, varying uses. Uh, treadmill's always been our most popular piece of equipment we have. Mm -hmm. um, and it's open for use for any township oh. official. Or Dan. Perhaps oh. even Richard. But <laughs> well, you gotta wear shoes for this area. I try to use it. 
yelling at it just would not make it go. So I decided to ask you about it. Yeah, <laughs> there was great excitement when the guy came and fixed it the first time. It worked for about what, Nick, 22 minutes or something? If that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's a Nick size hole in the wall behind. <laughs> Oh, yeah, <laughs> it stops moving, yeah. You keep it. Yeah. And there's lots of cartoons for that. Yeah. <laughs> I was supposed to say, there it is. Yeah. Uh, and then last but not least, I didn't put it in here, but I guess you want to talk about the name. Replacement. Not really. Okay, well, I okay go ahead. Okay. <laughs> uh, so we've had some uh, interesting news on the ambulance, the replacement of the ambulance. Um, the biggest delay is the chassis availability, as Dan experienced with his truck. Um, the books are closed. I don't know what exactly that means until June 1st uh, for Ford and for uh, GM. So they're not taking any orders at this point on chassis. Uh, and Dodge is similar. We haven't got the official word, but they're all having the same issue, which comes back to the great chip debacle of 2021 or 2020. I'm not sure what that was. But um, the ambulance manufacturer is ready to go, but they can't build anything until they have a chassis. Um, the other part of that, however, is the sticker price. Uh, so if you, if you remember, well, Chris, if you remember, since you were here for that one, in 2016 when we bought Medicaid 2, which this one will be a virtual clone of, it was $195,000. That's on state contract price. So we saved uh, 20, 20, 25000 by doing state contract and a bid. Um, we ended up paying a total of about two twenty for it. That included the power cot and everything. This one won't need a power cot. Uh, their estimate for this, not knowing the chassis price, is about two hundred eighty dollars to $290,000. Now, just to put this in perspective, and I know it's inflation, but when I first started um, and we purchased Engine 81, a four-door stainless steel fire engine, <laughs> custom built, uh, that price was $203,000. So, I won't. Repeat the quote that the dealer told me. But, uh, <laughs> um, you know, new fire engine prices. We were just at trade show this weekend, and bare bones Pierce fire engine is seven hundred ninety thousand dollars. So things aren't getting cheap, unfortunately. <coughs> uh, I just need to find a. My I just need my fantasy to happen where a member of the Walmart family or the Walton family drives through town, and <laughs> somehow we change their tire when it goes flat. And three weeks later, Margaret passes out and she opens an envelope with. A twelve million dollar check in, which at this rate would probably buy us two trucks. But, <laughs> but anyway, so we'll keep you posted on that. Uh, Denny's been working closely with Pancare, the Braun dealer, and, uh, and I met the vice president of Braun at the trade show. Uh, I've done it for several years, and he told me the exact same story. So, so. I don't think it's a scam. You, you just dropped on the last sentence. Oh, at the trade show this weekend. We, we were told the exact same story. From exact same. Braun dealer and the vice president of sales, uh, who has sold us actually both of our other ambulances and a rescue truck. So it's like a trusted family. Kind of like the third uncle that you don't really know well, but you're supposed to like him. <laughs> the Ford dealer won't even take an order until October for the chest. Yeah, they were saying the books are closed, but they have so many backlogs. Mm -hmm. And that was, I think, Bo Townsend's mm -hmm. that he was dealing with. Mm -hmm. um, the chassis, we're currently purchasing an ambulance and we're looking forward to a fire truck, right? Is that what you're saying? You, you could say that. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, the ambulance is, has to be mounted on a commercial, just standard commercial chassis, so, and that's our And probably a lot of the cost. Well, not really. Uh, okay. Chassis is going to run 65000 Okay. So that is a pretty big chunk of change. change. Yeah. For so we, right now we need an ambulance in, in time. Right. The one that we're, we're, I don't want to say fixing. The one we're fixing to replace, <laughs> okay. um, I don't know where that came from, <laughs> um, is a 2005. And typically an ambulance lifespan is about 10, 10 years. Now that one, we, re, we put a new engine in it 2009, I think-ish. To keep yeah. it going, but it's up around 100. And, I don't know what the miles are. Medicaid works, like 140, 150,000 miles at this point. So it's been a workhorse. Um, yeah. It's a little cantankerous at times, but. Mm -hmm. 
but it's, uh, we're just hoping it holds on until we can get it replaced. So. Can I ask a question of the citizen? Are we limited in terms of the board? Chevrolet, GM? Uh, in, in that style of ambulance, yes. We used to have, uh, we used to go with a bigger chassis, like a medium duty truck chassis, where then you open yourself up to also international and Freightliner, but those are substantially more expensive. So no, no Toyota? Correct. Uh, yeah. At least not built in the U.S. Uh, and it ambulance. has to be built in the U.S.? Well, I can't imagine what the import cost would be. You know, we did check the other manufacturers. Uh, we checked that GM and Chrysler, or whatever Chrysler's new name is, I can't remember. Um, and the, their lead time is substantially longer than the Ford lead time because Ford is a much larger player in the in the medic equipment uh, off or not road working sort of heavy duty truck line. I mean, they just always dominated that. And so they don't have a backlog, but they're, they know they've got to manufacture, you know, more than, than they usually do most of the time. GM and, and, uh, and, and Chrysler don't. They pretty much manufacture what they get orders for, um, standing orders. So they're even further behind on filling orders because of this whole, I mean, it all comes down to this silly, not silly, but this, this chip that goes in their main computer. It goes in the same main computers as there's a lot of stuff, and that's what's holding them up, except for Apple Watches and Apple iPhones uh, have all kinds of chips. Yeah. I did learn this weekend at the trade show, too, the manufacturer who makes our defibrillators are hard. They're 12 months out. Is that right? Because they, those things have 42 chips in them, mm -hmm. and uh, they can't get half the ones in there. Luckily, we have two good defibrillators, so we don't have to worry about replacing those anytime soon. So. Yeah. That is good. Yeah. Uh, okay, what else? Uh, well, this evening I have an offer to you. Members of C-Shift, um, there's a third one who's working with them today, but you've already, uh, you've already met him, Jake Rich. So. So tonight we have Lieutenant Jason Pelletti and Sergeant Nick Miller Jacobson, two uh, two veterans. <laughs> Smile, gentlemen. We're happy to see <laughs> you. We're happy to see you. <laughs> Is Sea Shift usually awake at this time of the day or asleep at this time of? Oh yeah, we're we're usually. This is actually the time we get usually moving around, and the other guys will usually work out around this time and make dinner together. And, Nick, mm -hmm. you want to tell us just a little about yourself? Well, I've been here for more than, I've been here as a general member for longer than, for about 10 years now. I started when I was 14, so uh, I guess, what is that, 14 years I've been at this department, so. Oh. Uh, grew up in Hell Springs and uh, still working, I worked through college and now I'm working as another job and doing this as well. So. What's the other job? I'm a commercial real estate agent. Mm -hmm. How's that going? Mm -hmm. Good. I would think so at this time. <laughs> uh, um, any addition, any other plans for the future? Uh, you want to continue this work or the other work or just keep combining them as long as you can? Or I'm happy combining them. Uh, you know, I enjoy both fields. They're both are interesting to me. Mm -hmm. um, the time frame with both are fairly flexible, which I enjoy. Um, I like Yellow Springs. I grew up here, so I'm still connected in that way. Um, you know, from there, just based on time and um, you know, and what's a good decision for me in the long run. That's a lot of good. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. Question for me? No. I'm curious, do you see 14-year-olds interested now? Not that I know, <laughs> honestly. I, I wish that I knew more, but can I don't know that any 14-year-olds. Can you, can you see a difference? Why? I think that, I think that some of that's just based on the, it is um, a, a much more, um, it's a difficult field to get into. It's a lot more training than it used to be. And 
you know, I think that we are, we're, we're more stressed to perform our duties than to just mingle with the populace. So, you know, that's a side of it. Jason, how about your nickel bio? Uh, my name is Jason Pelley. I've been here, uh, my gosh, this, since maybe the end of 2008, the beginning of 2009. Somewhere in there, it's a little murky. Uh, you make it sound like a sentence. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. This is home for me. I, lo I love it here. I know you do. Uh, yeah, I started as a volunteer. I, I just used to work restaurants all the time. And then I came to college and I was like, hey, I want to be a fireman. And he's like, well, you got to quit smoking and you got to you know, get on the right path. And I did that. And then from there I became EMT and I became the EMT advanced. And then I became a paramedic, which allowed me in my later life to become, uh, do a bridge uh, program, become a paramedic and then an RN. Mm -hmm. So I also work as a nurse. I work at uh, Soin and now Springfield has a, a place. Um, I did psychiatric nursing, which my training here actually helped me because we have a lot of psych patients sure. here. So I, I have a lot of patients for our uh, psych patients, but uh, yeah, I've been here for a, a long time. Yes, and we certainly appreciate it. Oh, thank you. you are you are certainly one of the stronger cervic 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 uh, yes. cervic um, spine. I'm trying. I'm working on spine. Oh, cervical. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're what holds up the organization. There you go. I, I appreciate it. I, I do my best. I try. I was trying to stay away from grandma. You know? <laughs> well, I mean, they, they call me that too. But, you know, so I love every day that I work, so I never ever work here. I just come to, it's, it's, I don't know, for a while there it was hard to learn how to clock in. <laughs> so when we go into clocking in and stuff, it was like, oh yeah, I gotta, I gotta work and clock in. But it's like, I like it so much, I don't really think of it as work. It's like, just kind of a day. And... Jason, I must say, there's very few times in my memory that I've been here that I don't see you. Yeah, I'm here a lot. I'm talking morning, noon, or night, or oh, this I, is home. I, don't I mean, much overnight anymore, but yeah, this. I mean, I thought it would be a hard transition to go from our old place because that's where I changed so much of my life. But coming here, it feels like we've been here a long time, mm -hmm. and I think that we have the dynamic now in our department where we just kind of settled in and made it our place. Mm -hmm. So I like it here. Good, good, absolutely appreciate it. Um, any questions for Jason? Well, you said there are a lot of psych patients here. What did you mean by that? We have a lot of, there's a, Yellow Springs as a whole is a very welcoming okay. uh, environment for people with psychiatric or behavioral issues. So it's, it's common to have somebody that may have a psychotic break or maybe depressressed mm -hmm. or maybe just having someone they need to talk to a little further than just being alone in their house. So they call 911 mm -hmm. and it takes, uh, it takes a special skill to talk to somebody like that sometimes, but we're not just medical and trauma and all that stuff. I learn how to deal with psychiatric patients. I mean, I, I learn how to deal with people pulling their hair and, you know, or, or, you know, just howling at the moon or whatever. It's, it's, I mean, we have a couple people here that, you know, come to mind and, you know, they're, they're off their meds a lot of times or intermittently on meds, off meds. It just kind of goes back and forth. And you know, you see different behaviors from them. Sometimes the cops need us to come and talk to them or, you know. Mm -hmm. At the old station, there, was, there were some that would, a couple people that would sit behind the fire station and yell at people on the bike path and sing real loud and I'd open the door and I'd say, hey, you stop that out there. And they're like, okay. <laughs> yeah, so. But it's, it's a very welcoming environment here. So we get a lot of people that are discharged from the hospitals that come here. Yeah. Or you know, it's kind of like a safe haven for people. So they see Yellow Springs as that environment where they can just be kind of like protected a little bit. So, and, and I don't hate that. I mean, I, I like our psych patients. So, and psychiatric nursing, it, it changed me as a as a nurse. You know, it wasn't wasn't an easy job, but it was a rewarding job to see people turn around. And, you know. I have a question. Uh, has the presence of the uh, social worker on the police department helped your workload? Um, I, I think it helps. I, I don't. I definitely don't think it does. I don't think it does harm. It takes. I think it's a team effort between all of us. You know. And she got Florence. I, I will always want to call her Flo because I. I don't know. Is that her name? Yeah. Flo. Oh. <laughs> I, 
I was, you know, in my head, I'm always like, hey, there's flow. And, uh, but uh, I think she definitely has a, a knack for talking to people, you know. She does the same thing that I, I will do sometimes in psychiatric nursing, where you kind of reach out and you do this to somebody, or, you know, you kind of put your hand out and just show them that there's, you know, you're there to do no harm, so. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. I have nothing additional. I'm very moved by both your stories. I didn't hear what you said. I said I'm very moved by both oh. of your stories. Thank you. Well, we certainly appreciate both of your work and for coming and spending a few minutes for this evening. Um, we're going to change just a little bit. Uh, Nick, would you mind coming up this way for us, please? We're kind of working your way through this little maze. Don't be scared. So we get, get a space now, now call the bowl. <laughs> and then if you come up to about here, this is <laughs> face the camera for a smile and for the rest of that. <laughs> so they know who we were talking about. Yeah. And we're giving out very much, Nick, we're giving out minor uh, gifts of appreciation for Appreciate your work, it. and we're certainly glad you're here. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Jason, yeah. believe it or not, would you mind <laughs> coming up here? <laughs> Turn to face the audience. <laughs> <laughs> See, now you have your smile, and I'm not going to stop. So. <laughs> what is behind door number one, door number two, or door number three? <laughs> I would be a gift card. <laughs> no, you might be correct. We could walk over there and do it, but that would take a little while. But anyway, thank you very oh, much for being welcome. here with us. Absolutely. Wait a minute, come back here. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And you're, you're free to return to your. Where would you guys go? We watch TV. We scurry around out there and have things to do. Right, thank you, everybody. They leave the there will be a call. Well, we'll know they're in good hands. That leads me to a question. The, uh, it's, where it's, it's on, but I, I see it on the little Facebook feeds about the volunteer of the week, or who's doing that? I know you have to leave, I'm sorry. Who's, who's putting that on? Who thought that up? Oh, you mean it was during National Volunteer Week. We were profiling the volunteers. Okay. Who, who thought that up and who did it? Uh, okay, yeah. thank you. Oh yeah, no, I just it's saw that it was National Volunteer Week. I thought, oh, we should do something. Yeah, I mean, we never really put faces. Yeah. There would have been a few others, but they didn't answer my emails when I asked them for information about them. Even when I threatened that I would just make it up. Uh -huh. I thought that would be not nice either. <laughs> okay. She's got a, 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 a was it a disco rehearsal? Or yes, I've got a disco rehearsal that I have to get to. Yeah. Get to so. Just real quick, Colin, yeah. have you guys looked at used market for any of uh, yeah, Yes and no. I mean, we've looked, typically ambulances in the used market are, have been really beaten up mm -hmm. to death. Because yeah. um, most places run them into the ground. Fire engines you do typically better because, I mean, even our tent will look. 12-year-old fire engine only has 43,000 mi uh, 43, miles on it. Yeah. Um, but a lot of times you'll find an ambulance that might look good and it's got 192,000 miles yeah. on it. Yeah, I, so. I don't know what the market is. I know in our business we're suffering from the same issues, so we've got to turn to use equipment. And so yeah. you might want to just relook. Because a quick glance when I look, there's lots of 2020s and beyond. So no, I'll just take care of it. I don't. Well, we may get to that to yeah. you know, tide us over. There's yeah, questions there, but uh, you know, we tend to keep our equipment fairly well maintained. Not necessarily the easiest on them, but I guess that's the nature of the business. Uh, yeah, except for the downside with any fire police vehicle, it's the same thing. Or public works is that you have multiple drivers, each with a different. No matter how hard you train them, <laughs> they all have their own way of driving. Um, and in our line of work, you know, on our side, the, our biggest issue runs into a lot of the part-time guys, not that they're bad, but they have multiple fire departments they work for, and each one has their own way to do things, and some places are big on driving over the curbs and all that kind of stuff, and we try and really not do that kind of thing there. But. Well, on principle, I think uh, we should always look. Oh, yeah, of course. Oh, definitely. Did you do the center point training you were talking about? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
go okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Decent turnout. Yeah, we had a big turnout from um, the first session was Public Works um, mm -hmm. and Denny. And then the second session, I think we had 14 people here. Your, your people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the police had whatever's left of the police department, mm -hmm. <laughs> unfortunately. Um, a quick question. Um, on your native plant event, it wasn't here as I know, but it was here. <laughs> I thought we were, I mean, I thought the idea was we'd offer food for sale, the, the, the volunteers. That was the idea that the Firefighters Association was going to do that, and apparently, from what I found out from Captain Harris, is that they, who wasn't involved in that, but who was working that day, they had an internal miscommunication among themselves, mm -hmm. thinking that the event was in May. Were they surprised when all the people drove in on that morning? Uh, I guess they were surprised when everyone started texting and saying, where are you guys? <laughs> There's hungry plant people here. Um, but oh, there are plenty plant of people want their hot dogs. Okay, good. <laughs> uh, any update on the Clifton Training Center? That's the last thing I have. Uh, no, I mean, I just know that Mayor Beer is working on uh, funding proposals. Okay, so he has not made application to the... He may have, but I haven't heard any update oh. from him recently. So. Okay. Thank you, and well, good evening. Thank you. Good evening to you all. Are you really going to a disco train? No, but I've got a meeting in Mason. I've got to do stuff. <laughs> See you guys. Bye. Cemetery Sexton? Yes, sir. You're on deck. Since our last meeting, we've had no barriers. What? Mm -hmm. We do this Saturday, and we have one on the 13th, and then one on the 11th, and coming up. Actually, I was going to say, these people know this. This Saturday, we will wear it over there because they want to be out here. Mm -hmm. That's on our schedule. Uh, not much else. Working in the natural area, trying to get that prep. Might be able to have a pretty little prep this week. The Oak Grove? The Oak Grove. Mm -hmm. The Oak Grove edition. Uh -huh. Things keep moving smoothly. I should have it ready to maybe just concede. You know, Mm -hmm. That's ambitious. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that'd yeah, be cool. I like it. Yeah. So I've got other things to do too. Uh, I haven't heard from the surveyor, but he said first Well, day. maybe I can beat him. Yeah, as long as we're ahead of him, that'd be great. Um, I mean, Oak Grove Edition, now that it's official, since it has a uh, swamp oak, swamp white, white oak, I just want to say that, planted at the entrance, which will soon to have a sign a wooden sign that says Oak Grove Natural Burial on the tree. It's going to be a four foot sign by nine inches. And so people will know where it is when the time comes. And then we get the surveyor out and if we can get some of these locations pinned, we can actually start selling them because we're not going to sell any of the other natural burial sites back there until the Front area is Obviously. mostly sold, so I'm looking forward to him coming in and, and pin those locations. So it's, it's still a, a, a needed expansion as opposed to an alternative. I mean, you're saying you're not yes. really moving into it and build up. Yeah, except for except for stuff. selling of the tree graves. We'll have 60 tree graves mm -hmm. that, that will be available. As soon as it gets surveyed. Oh, oh, oh they will be available. Those will, yes. Oh, okay. But, but other than that, not. The specialty items will be available. The yeah. general, more general burial plots won't be available. Yeah. They won't be surveyed out either, so we won't yeah. actually know where they are at that point. But we, will they do burials if we sell a spot for a tree? Yes. But that's only places for now that we do burials. Right. Is it clear? Okay. I found uh, Ron Hampton is going to maybe wire that building for us. Oh. And uh, he, I met with him, he's going to make up a list and we have to show a list of the, mm -hmm. he's going to get back with me. So I found some ways to do it. Okay. <coughs> I was wondering about that. Mm -hmm. um, but he wants to put a line on the outside of the building for some reason. Right? So he wanted to get a light on the outside. I don't either, but is he going to put lights on the inside of the building? Mm -hmm. Just two LED lights. For the, or more mm -hmm. in there, in there. It's an outlet. It's an, an outlet for the outside. Mm -hmm. 
Right. That's going to be 100 amp servos for this. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, that's what they said to put in. My memory is terrible. Where are we on water for the center? Uh, I'm still not going to go along. It's a leak. I have to fix that leak. But we can't. We can turn it on. It's just going to leak right there. You know, where all the leaks. But can't we turn uh, the, the frost proof, the main frost proof up by the road? Can't we activate that? I'll have to ask. I I'll have to there check a, because there was a valve that I thought ran so from that. They could shut off after that. Yeah. Well, we talked to Ben or uh, Jeff tomorrow to <coughs> okay. do about water. He loved to ask about water. Yeah. And if the frost proof worked, it would, it would be okay. Yeah. And it'd be nice for you to have it a little closer yeah. for yeah. Well, transit there's a truck water down there. They got a truck down and down the way. Mm -hmm. I'll ask him about that. Okay. And I talked to Hensley's about their thing. They're on board, but we talked about it at the pre con meeting about what they're thinking. Mm -hmm. Hensley. Mm -hmm. Did I tell you? No. And they, she recommended a three inch overlay, but we had talked to her and said, said a two inch would be fine for what we're doing. And they recommended the road has a three inch overlay. Mm -hmm. We agreed, decided on a two inch would be fine. Mm -hmm. one inch and a half, but she was about two inches. Okay. They're holding up there. Now, right now, you're only talking about in the cemetery, right? Yes, sir. Well, in Brian Park Road. Huh? Uh, in Brian well, Park Road, but that's different. That gets it. Yeah, that's only an inch and a half. But yeah. this is new. They're going to reclaim them. Yeah. And then she wants to put three inch and we agree on two inch would be fine. Mm -hmm. I, in, in the road report, I was going to ask about that. Just the old side. We didn't get a uh, just you didn't get a firm date for grave rumors. No, they haven't called me back. Mm -hmm. They're just getting their schedule. Which is, yeah, which is I can call them. I haven't heard further about potential columbarium construction. I have a feeling, just by the way that it sounded. They they buy that stuff. I, I think they buy it. These are pieces that they're that are already done. I don't think they're doing them on site. They buy them pre pre. And then they assemble them. Yeah, it's like a kit, yeah. basically. Because it made it sound like, oh well, we'll get them and then we'll assemble it. It didn't say, well, then we'll grind it and mill it and uh -huh. polish it. The whole deal. Because there's a bunch of pieces to it. Yeah. We're ready for them. We have light like for them. Yeah, we're ready. They work it on it. Uh, okay, anything else for the cemetery? No. Oh. Okay, road man. Um, well, uh, our scheduled delivery on our truck is the second week of May, but mm -hmm. it's supposed to be March, so we'll see. Yeah. Well, it, it's all, you know, we're doing it. We were just, we were just hoping it to get it together for, frankly, for the snow for next Hopefully. winter. Okay. So if we could get it, it'd, it'd probably be, be ready for the yeah. next season. Yeah. So it is. Because Katie Rose will have it three months probably. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Probably like eight, eight or ten weeks probably. Well, when we originally ordered, if you remember, he was talking about August delivery. Right. And that's what I was thinking we may or may not get. We it. might not. Have. Yeah. If, but it, like, if it comes soon, then Eric yeah. will get us in. Yeah. Provided him with a slow one, you know, hold up on his end. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I went around and looked at roads the other day. Uh, Houston Road seems to be pulling up a pothole on the left side going out. Uh, you notice that? Which out? This out or that out? I'm headed towards High Road. That's out. It's on that end? It's, on, it's in the middle. It's on, it's on this side of the middle, on the left. Well, I'm going to check it out. I just didn't want it to get too, you know, too yeah. big. I saw a couple of them the other day. They had popped up so big. Is that pile of brush on the Grinnell Circle ears? I didn't know about a pile of brush. Yeah, it's, it's right, at the, right at the corner of Glen Drive and Grinnell. Oh, it is. 
Is there a scar so, if, uh, if it needs to be cleaned up? We'll headed, headed down. There's a little spot there, and there's a. It's not a big pile, but it's, it's a. Hold well, on, I don't know. I'll go check it. It's a little. The jar will make it well, make it disappear with it. Okay. Um, what? Did I ask you the last time? I, there's been a cone on that first corner of Harbison Road. There's an orange cone that's been there about a month. It's not an orange. Oh, what's it there? I don't know. But obviously, it's signifying that that pothole that's right there on that corner that's... I don't know who left it there. It's full of water. I mean, I don't know how deep that hole is, but it's always full of water when I'm going by it. Off of Blue Force Cliff? Yeah, the first hard, hard left. Oh, down where the where they keep cutting the corner. Is that where? It, yeah. I, 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 Nolan probably put that there. To try to keep it cutting. The corner. Every time I fix that, they just go far away. Cause you probably put the big rocks there. We had a post there years ago. They drove over. It, so. mm -hmm. <laughs> Somebody bought a new tire. That was a nasty, oh, wow. that was a nasty post was there too. Yeah, it was. Um, well, okay. Well, let me check on this. Throw some stones in there or do something. I mean, I can put some tubes in it and fill it in. Yeah. You know, like I said, but it's. I know. Okay. okay. Or, you got your cold pass lying around? I do. Mm -hmm. But I can put something in the hole first. Well, yeah. yeah. I didn't think you put the. I got it. Okay. 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 Uh, okay. That's all I have for roads. Um, Don, I think maybe I've forgotten this, but are we settled on prices from the county engineer? Mm -hmm. and Whatever she said it to us. And what was the increase? As far as cost. Actually, to less. Compared to last time? Because that those countered everything. The first numbers were way high, the, the second numbers. You talk about paving for Brian Park? Well, all the different improvements that we want. Shipping. It came in, yeah, it came in less than the initial. Did you give us a spreadsheet of those? Just the initial. Whatever she sent to us. The first round. Mm -hmm. So I've got that. You should have. It's okay. not only a copy of it. If I can't find it, I'll ask. Okay. Well, it, it came in on our email, so you know. Right. I'll look it up. Email. Just, just search Stephanie's name, and it should be there. But the, the the second set was just based on him either going or calling Stephanie and I saying, to her, right? "What's the deal, etc., cetera, etc." Cetera. Well, I'm pleased. Me too. How about you? Good. All right. <laughs> She's dead. Ah, let's move to the fiscal office report. Well, I'm happy. <laughs> uh, I have a, a resolution 2022-20, amendment of permit appropriations. We're asking it's an ongoing process to accurately appropriate funds according to the needs of the township. Now, therefore, the trustee will come authorize amending the following appropriations. And it's just in the general fund, it increased um, other expenses, 1,000-13599, which is zoning, by $1,000. And 1,110-360 contract and services increased by 3,000, and that's what we've been paying um, Mr. Sloan out of that line. So. I thought he was going to quit charging for stuff. Well, but we, well, I guess, you know. Uh, this know. Bring, he said this brings it to the the limit that we agreed to, twenty-one thousand. Oh well, we haven't we haven't spent that much. We spent about um, seventeen thousand. Don't tell. Them. What? <laughs> so I said, don't tell. Them. <laughs> uh, I spoke on the phone with him. He said he, he no. just sent a bill that would bring it up to. Well, maybe that's not the one. That, maybe the one that I was. Yeah, like I just paid. It's not ago. that one. Okay. Because I had that to the one that we just paid tonight. Uh, anyway, we'll be, we'll be talking about him later. Okay. Well, if, if it's twenty, if it's going to be, if we are going to end up spending twenty-one thousand, I'm going to be, I'm going to be amending that appropriation again because it's not there. Anyway, that's it. So, 
So, and we need entertain to a motion to adopt this resolution. Is there a motion? Yes. Is there a second? Yes. Is there any further discussion? Discussion. Hearing none, may we vote, please? Mr. Mutcher? Yes. Ms. Moyer? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Thank you. Margaret? Yes. Have you received $64,754.15 as our second tranche distribution from the ARAP money? Yeah, remember yeah, remember, let me see. I don't know. I don't remember. Is there a revenue report there? Yeah, no, but it doesn't show anything. Well, then we didn't get it yet. Uh, Sometimes it goes into somewhere else. Mm -hmm. okay. But you haven't seen anything. No, if it's not here. Then because we got we got the first one in April, and I ex I expected the second one to be in April, and it's now May. Mm -hmm. So that means who knows what it means, but I guess I'll. Find no, no, wait. Yeah, it's here. No, no it's not. Sorry. Wait a minute. No. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. All right. I'll try and find somebody who might know. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That was easy. Anything else for the fiscal officer? No. Mr. Hollister? Yep. Nope. So the inspector's report? Okay, I believe since the last time I spoke to you all, I have issued three permits, uh, one on Larkins Road for a garage, one on Kyle Road for a garage and deck, a little, little fancier, and one on Hilt Road for an in-ground swimming pool. So I'm not exactly cranking out the the buildings, but that's what's happening on that front. Um, do you um, do you know where the actual locations were on Kyle Road? I mean, if, have you been there? I have no. I know I'm familiar with the, the property. It's 4182 Kyle Road. It, yeah, sure. It's an existing sure. house. Oh. They're putting the garage on the back of the house with it's. The garage is actually, it's interesting, he explained this to me in great detail. The garage is actually separate from the house, mm -hmm. but it's right next to the house so they can walk out onto it as a deck. Because it's a, you know, it's kind of like a walkout basement where the garage is. Sounds cool. Yeah. Well, I've noticed that there's construction going on on Kyle, Kyle Road, and there's a substantial sized building that you, you may have permitted long ago. Okay, well, you have to give me an address yeah. or, or, well, yeah. or draw me a picture or something, or we can look at the GIS after the meeting. Yeah. I can go and check. Woods? Yeah. Right in the woods on the right, as you go in, it's like yeah. the second one. The yeah. first lot you go to, yeah. there's two building lots. And the first one, they've got a building and a camper. And they've got, that's what I'm getting to. Is it, there, there's, a, there's a camper on the property and cars, mm -hmm. obviously. And uh, I just was wondering if that was you know, a precursor to a home site that had been permitted. We'll have to find out. Yeah. Okay. Um, I know you issued a permit for, for those, but I don't know what your permit was for, whether it was just for the bar, that pole bar, or whether that they built a pole bar mm -hmm. and then parked the trailer in there. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think, you know, this is, this is tickling my memory now. And I think that yeah, we did we did permits for both, both the, the pole barn and then for the home. But um, okay. other than leaking through here at the moment, oh, that's all right. Just as, fine. Just as long as you got something official, that's all I was. Well, wondering. I say I need to double check. There's, uh -huh. there's no way of knowing without looking up the paperwork. <laughs> um, the zoning commission presumably met while I was on vacation. Um, but I have not seen the, the minutes, so the proposed minutes have not come out yet, and I didn't um, <coughs> give anybody a call just to see, but usually they call me if there's any, any concern. So um, I'm assuming everything is fine with the Zoning Commission. And then... Do you um, think they would have held their, their public 
hearing regarding the no there they no we the regarding the the, PUD? the public hearing regarding the PUD has not been scheduled yet. Mm -hmm. Okay. And see they don't have a meeting in May, generally speaking. Mm -hmm. or we would have scheduled it for May. Mm -hmm. Um so it it looks like unless unless somebody feels some urgency about that, then it'll be in a meeting in June. Mm -hmm. But I need to talk to them actually about that since I won't see them until June. But that's what we talked about back in in March. Mm -hmm. So yes, that's a, that's certainly a, an important thing to follow up to, to keep that to keep that moving because we don't always think about the. I thought the public hearing was with us. It will be after theirs. They have to have one first. Yeah, each one, each one has. And then they will uh, then they will either recommend adoption of their changes, or if for whatever reason they go through their public hearing and decide not to further it along, then or change it slightly yeah, or whatever, it never comes. So us. we don't distribute it or make it available to the public until they've adopted. It. Right. They they essentially the zoning commission makes a recommendation to you. We don't adopt it. We say this is this. We give our blessing to this amendment. Yeah, everything's a recommendation until it gets to us. I mean, the yeah. regional planning is a recommendation. Town commission is a recommendation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the the same thing. Just to, to make sure that they're all available to do it. And there was some discussion uh, back in March, given how the spring was going, whether everybody would be planting in May or not this year. But I think things have dried out enough that people are starting to get out of the field. So yeah. I doubt that there will be a, a meeting in May. Um, the last item, but you, you're probably all very aware of it, we had a BCA hearing last Thursday. Um, and there has been some, uh, I don't know, fallout from that meeting, but it has to do with personnel, and I'd like to have a, an executive session to discuss that. Well, okay. Um, I wish Jen Huber were here. We certainly can have executive sessions, and one of the reasons can be for personnel for hiring, firing, or discipline. Of personnel. Those are three reasons. Your request may come under one of those three, but I'm not sure that unless we're talking about your position, right? With well, the whether, whether, okay. Well, that it's that, applicable. I mean, that's a possibility, but I mm -hmm. certainly wanted more than that. In in so much as as information has been given to me in confidence about, um, which is now public, one resignation from the BZA. Right. And, I, and you asked you know, if I had more information about mm -hmm. that, but I'm not sure that, or I don't feel I'm at liberty to, to discuss that in public. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how you want to handle it. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, there's, there's no problem with you writing a confidential memorandum to the board with whatever information you wanted to give us regarding the, the, the hearing or, mm -hmm. or anything else. Um, okay, I just, I'm, yeah, you know, I just, that was the process that came to my mind. Yeah. I've not yeah. had to deal with this situation before. We certainly could check with, you know, our legal representation. And, mm -hmm. uh, no, I, I think it's important that that you get the feedback from your appointees. Mm -hmm, sure. And, um, well, if you don't feel if it comes doing through it. me, yeah. then and they haven't said, oh yes, you know, tell everybody, mm -hmm. which isn't the sense that I had. Then uh, I just want to do it in a responsible yeah. manner. It's kind of like having a personnel file yeah. or something. Sure. You know, I, that's not yeah. a public records request, but I want to make sure that it goes in the right place. Mm -hmm. Well, I see two things here. <clears throat> Are you talking about yourself also? Well, I, that that is also a distinct possibility. I, we could 
we could have a meeting just to talk about myself. Um, I, thought, I thought maybe all of that could be, be done together. But um, yes, I, I think that, that my position does need to be discussed. But that doesn't have to happen tonight. Yeah, I, was, I was then going to ask, would, it, would that be more substantive if the other information was on the table? Yeah, I think it's or all in, relevant. Or in our minds. Yeah. Again, does it have to do with hiring, firing, or discipline? No. That's the No, I agree. I think so I think I need to prepare this confidential memo mm -hmm. to give to you all mm -hmm. to digest. And then you will have that information and you can use it as you see fit mm -hmm. when we have uh, an executive meeting to discuss my position. Hiring, firing, whatever discipline. I mean, well, in the past, we're not my salary that. was I apologize, I got a kid even. Maybe that's no longer the case. Because that's, is that considered hiring or firing? It, it, it wouldn't be the case. Um, and if it was, it was probably inappropriate okay. at the time. Um, Wait, I just missed that. In the okay. past? I said in the past, for example, I was brought into executive session to discuss my salary. Not being fired or hired mm -hmm. or disciplined. And so I, but if that's no longer, we've learned differently. I think we've tried to tighten things up to, to the way it's supposed to be. Uh, we, we've had audits in the past where they've questioned you know, whether it was yeah. legitimate. And, and I'm not trying to question the process in any way, shape, or form. I'm just, as I say, I want to I wanna put the information I have in the right place mm -hmm. to get to the right mm -hmm. people. And, you know, in the, well, in the appropriate process. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. Hi. Uh, Where's our test? In our, I have been tested uh, just two days ago. Um, and I came up negative. I have a pretty bad cold. Uh, or did. In our correspondence, mm -hmm. there's reference to DCA resignation, mm -hmm. and I haven't looked at that. Well, you need to take a look. I, I mean, it, wouldn't it be public if it's in the correspondence? It certainly would. You gotta look at these things. It's like two sentences. Yeah, it's very short. <laughs> Unless you got something different than no, no I got copied from for me, I'm pretty sure. It's just not part of my report. It's moving on to other things in zoning, I believe. Uh, well, it says that Linda Parsons writes, I quit. Okay. So that was it. And it's dated today, so that helps explain why I didn't see it. So, and I have more information about that <laughs> subject. Okay. But as I say, it was it was conveyed to me, I'm presuming, in private. Okay. Then we'll take it confidentially. Okay? Yeah. That's fine. There's no problem with that. Um, what else do you have? And that's all I have for my regular report. Okay. Um, I'd like to ask how you felt the zoning hearing went on a procedural basis, on an actual mechanical basis of how things, you know, how things went through the evening, um, how you felt, did you feel comfortable with either or both of our uh, attorneys, our representation, were they helpful, were they not? Um, okay, let me just, I, I'll, I'll break that down. Um, I personally did not find our legal representation helpful. I found it uh, sort of aggressive. Both? 
I don't believe that the representative of the prosecutor's office said anything. Okay, so it, it was it was just the attorney that was hired by the township. Mm -hmm. um, the and that that attorney apparently convinced the Board of Zoning Appeals that um, because there was some controversy, I shouldn't be involved, or I shouldn't be able to answer any questions to them when they discussed the case. Mm -hmm. Which was kind of unusual. That's, mm -hmm. um, that was, in, in fact, the last time that I didn't go into their deliberations, they said, why aren't, why aren't you here? And they, you know, they asked for me to come in. Mm -hmm. and, and our counsel in the past never had any, any concerns about that. Mm -hmm. That's um, so this one asked you not to go into the deliberation. Well, they, yeah, I, mean, I, I was, I was a little slower than everybody else getting into the room because I was making a copy of, of something that uh, we, the stenographer needed as we were moving out, and when I came back, that decision seemed to have already been made. I was, I was not there for the discussion. Mm -hmm. It was just asked that I not participate. Mm -hmm. I was there for the discussion. Okay. And um, she as much as told us that she was kicking you out, and there was not a vote among the BCA members, board members to um, not ask you to be. We felt like we didn't have a choice. So she this, wasn't asking. This is Barbara Craybeck, one of our BCA board members. members. Yeah. Yeah. Who is she? Jen Cuba. Uh, yeah, I couldn't remember her last name. Yeah, and we, she was disruptive in other ways. At one point she told us she didn't know that we had the authority to decide this uh, request for a variance. And we said, well, that's what, what we do. Mm -hmm. And she kind of backtracked on that. So I, I, one of the reason, things I wanted to ask tonight was why she was hired. For this, uh, the firm is uh, has a has a long history of township representation in zoning issues, and specifically uh, uh, BZA type hearings, etc. Uh, and to come back a little bit, our local representation from the prosecutor's office has, in my opinion very, very little experience in representing township in hearings such as this. Uh, and so I reached out to that firm to, to provide representation for the BZA. That was the first time we'd used them. Um, I think it'll be worth clarifying that we retained them uh, at least a month ago. Mm -hmm. This was not, it wasn't for this issue. No. It, it was to not necessarily, re, well, it is kind of to replace the county prosecutor or at least augment their, their work or maybe be there until the county gets up to speed, but they just don't have at least they don't have my um, uh, strong feeling of uh, competence. Yeah. I, I think, and this may be just hindsight, that if the Board of Zoning Appeals or the Zoning Inspector is, is going to have counsel, then the counsel ought to um, Introduce themselves, tell them what what their service they're providing, some some little bit of background rather than just showing up and taking over. Mm -hmm. the, the second thing that, that occurs to me in the you know we two two things have happened in, in recent time. The first one I would say was the Agraria hearing, where suddenly the, the people making the request 
made a sort of an effort to turn the BZA hearing into a courtroom. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, there was cross-examination going on, whatever. And it was kind of obviously a, a surprise mm -hmm. to, to all of us. That, that had never happened before. Um, we seemed to be able to handle it. But what I realized after that process, if we're comparing it to a court, there was, no, there was nothing going in the other direction. In other words, you, you got cross-examined by the defense, but you never prosecuted in the first place, or you never answered the questions. And um, we did actually, at, at that meeting, get some, some knowledgeable support from the prosecutor's office, because he actually questioned some of the evidence that was being presented as, oh, you're just picking and choosing, you know, mm -hmm. rather than giving us the whole, the whole picture. So, as you say, it's a mixed bag from the prosecutor's office. You never know for sure. But anyway, that, you know, it's tempting just to chalk it up to that particular situation and say, that's that. But then we ended up, in my mind, in the same situation on Thursday, where there were all kinds of um, uh, testimony and assertions and statements of presumed fact from the audience with no opportunity for anyone with knowledge of the situation to refute any of those facts, mm -hmm. right? And honestly, um, it happens to be that I'm the person that knows the most about the case. Mm -hmm. There was never any question, is this, you know, is this your experience? Is this what, what took place? Da, 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 da. Right. And so I'm, I'm curious about how we're going to conduct BCA hearings in the future. Is it just going to be attacks from the audience? All right, because that's, all right, well, let's back up. You, your second question, you know, second part of the question, first part of the question was how do things work in the attorney? All right, I think we've answered that. The second was how was, was the meeting conducted? Um, although Richard Silliman has been the chair of the BZA since Kathy Dallas resigned, um, at this meeting he did not follow the agenda, he did not follow the rules that he had been given about conducting the meeting, he did not follow the rules that he gave to the audience, he did not keep the audience under control, people were shouting out from the audience. Um, and I'm not literally saying Richard did, I mean, whether Richard did something bad or good or he just wasn't experienced enough to do a good job, I realized that we did not run a meeting that, that was anywhere near as effective as it could have been. And so maybe we need to, to formally have some kind of training when someone becomes the chair of, of the BZA. We're, we're in a whole new situation. As I've said to a couple people, you know, I've been, been doing this for over 20 years, and for 20 years we had BZA hearings where pretty much we could sit down at the table and talk about it, all right? And now we've been pushed into these, these situations where it's, it's, it's a contest, mm -hmm. all right? Yeah. And, but what, made this situation um, untenable for me was the attack made by the audience on the BZA and, and no action taken to mitigate that. Mm -hmm. And that, that to me was both extremely unfortunate and probably had some impact on the decision. Mm -hmm. oh. Um, I, yeah, this is where I need to step in and say, part of the, I'm part responsible for the disruption because I lost my temper and I spoke out of turn to an audience member. And uh, <laughs> Richard did not keep me under control. <laughs> he didn't say, please don't do you know, say any more or anything because then, you know, it's start the back. And this Richard or that yeah, Richard? Yeah, Richard. Richard. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Yeah. Sullivan, our, our chair. Chair Richard. <laughs> Chair, yeah. Well, I don't run the meeting. No, that's right. And uh, I, I didn't even think, and I apologize 
that we could have asked you questions about this situation, because especially since this was the third iteration of this request for this particular variance. You know, it just seemed like it was just a tray, a runaway tray. Yes. With or without my interference. Um, I would, if we talk about, to you, and I'm sure you will structure these meetings, I'd like to see if there's any provision for not accepting testimony for people who are not in the township slash village. Because we, we've got less than, we've got emails from all across the country. We've got people called into the, when we had to do it by Zoom, called into the Zoom mm -hmm. about that. You know, and now, and this time we had people from, you know, Cincinnati and, and who knows where all else. Mm -hmm. Is that, I don't know if that's a possibility, but it might be something you, you know, I don't would care to think about. Yeah, uh, it's something for a legal determination. No, that, that's something, yeah, a question about that. It's, yeah, it's another one of those things that you don't think about, right. and, and I can tell you that that's kind of a, I don't know, I'll say a two-edged sword. You could say only people that are in, that, that, that are um, covered by the zoning should be able to speak for or against the zoning. But then you say, in this particular situation, how about the people just across the Clark County line yeah. are, who are definitely impacted by this? Mm -hmm. All right, is their testimony valid? Mm -hmm. Or if you um, bring in an, an expert, <laughs> does the expert have to live in the township? Well, no. And so it's, it's a little bit gray, and I, I would certainly not only want a legal opinion, but I want to, want to think very carefully about how you, you would go about restricting any kind of testimony. Oh, absolutely. Now, we did have a stenographer there. Yes. Was there somebody filming this also? Well, the, only the media. We did not try to, to, to film it our, ourselves. And I don't know how consistent that person had his camera on throughout the meeting. For all I know, people have, have docu documented the meeting to some extent, but it was not done officially by Miami Township. Well, the, yes, it was. The court well, reporter, I mean, the stenographer was. The, yeah. the court reporter will have recorded all the verbal, virtually 100%, uh, I mean, that's what they're there for, yeah, of the of the verbal testimony or responses, mm -hmm. so. That is, they will have done it through stenography, will they also have a tape? No. Okay. They, they do it by. What, but, but, no, I thought you said it was being recorded. <laughs> Oddly, all right, all right, all right. All right. I brought an audio <coughs> recorder to the meeting before I learned that the, we were having a stenographer. So, in other words, what's right? basically at the last minute, I'm talking with the prosecutor's office, and they're asking me, you know, they're saying to me, are you, you know, how are you documenting the, the meeting? And I say, I'm taking minutes. And they say, look, you only have minutes, and this is appealed, and it has to be a full-blown trial because the judge can't merely review what took place at the meeting. But if you have a, a recording of the meeting or a, a sonographer, a transcript or a recording, then it can be a, a simpler process if an appeal is made. And I said, I see. <laughs> okay. And so this was at like two o'clock in the afternoon. And I uh, you know sort of sent out an all points bulletin saying, do because anybody can anybody record this? And then I thought of someone I knew who had a good audio recorder and was able to borrow it and, and brought it to the meeting. Um, but it's superfluous at this but you did not run it. No, I it. ran it. But it's it's I not did. my recorder, so I don't have a tape or a, a chip or whatever. I have to get that. I would be interested. So I, you know, I'm, I'm sure that that will be. I mean, it is available. I just haven't, you know, I haven't pushed to get it because it's not critical, seemingly at this point. But we'll see. We'll see how well that system worked in case it's something we want to use in the in the future too. There was a little miscommunication in so much as Richard was out of the country for the, you know, for a, a lot of the time when this was all being set up, and uh, I obviously missed the communication with him 
after I hired a court reporter. Yeah, we had a, we had a snafu on the previous museum meeting with Well, the the, pre, the 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 snafu on that one was that um, Agrarius attorney offered to hire a, a court reporter, and I said, "Oh, that's great, that's <laughs> wonderful." Well, it turned out what she was doing was hiring one, but not paying for it. Okay, <laughs> you know we. And, and of course, then we didn't have anything to say about the size of the bill and, and the quality of the reporting. And in fact, you know, that there was a snafu there because somehow she had told us that she had hired one and then there was not one there at the scheduled meeting and we had to reschedule the meeting where we had a court reporter. Um, but that, that was our introduction <coughs> and after that, we did a little more research. Chris did, uh, I did a little bit on, you know, Who's available? How much lead time do they need? So forth and so on, and uh, and and what the cost is. I, you know, as I I said, I've never had a budget for operating, you know, um, and this is the, the I think this is the first time that I've literally had an expense, <laughs> um, and you know, it was a, a little bit of a shock to me when that 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 first bill came in for the stenographer. Um, so this time around, Chris sent me an email saying, you know, should we hire one? And I said, if you approve, go, go right ahead. But it's, you know, I, didn't, I don't actually feel that I yet have the authority to go out and hire someone. Mm -hmm. Now that's something we can discuss in, in tuning up the process for the, the BZA or any other public mm hearing. -hmm. You know, we, we probably don't sense the need for a, for a stenographer at a, a zoning commission public hearing, but who knows mm -hmm. what's down coming down the road. Well, I can imagine in reading what you've got, stenographers before, <laughs> that there'd be display. a couple sections of the meeting that I'd like to you just like to listen here. Well, I will try to get that to you, Don, in a way that you can listen to them. Or, or get a copy. Well, I don't, as I say, I, don't, I think what this will boil down to will be uh, you know, a, a thumb drive or whatever that can be plugged into a computer and then you can listen to it with your computer. Um, the actual device, you can put on headphones and a jack and, and listen. But I don't, we don't own the device. Mm -hmm. um, but so I need to basically the same as how we're doing the recording. It's, it's a digital recording. How, how it works. Yeah, it's a digital recording. No, there's no two ways about that. And and we didn't have time to experiment. So you know, between the, the technician that, that gave it to me, he said it'd be better to have it on a tripod than sitting on the table. And yes, obviously try to get it equal distance from the people you're trying to hear, so the BCA members. And so that's why we had people from the audience come up. Those people who were shouting from the back of the room, whether we got that or not, I, I don't know. But we also said we weren't worried about the quality of the recording, so we put the gain way up. Mm -hmm. So hopefully we, we picked up everything we could. And the last thing that, that nobody seemed to know was exactly how many minutes of recording we would get. There's a possibility mm -hmm. that, it, that it ran out before the three plus hours of the, of the meeting. Mm -hmm. But it would be close to that is what everybody saw. But I will I will make an effort to get the recording sooner rather than later. When are we gonna have the uh, it takes a takes a couple of weeks to you know the stenographers. Yeah. So that last one, was it distributed at all? The um, the like we had a court reporter for the agrarian meeting? Or I uh, I kept thinking I would come across it was I guess I should have requested it. It was um, it was sent to us electronically. It was an email from the from the yeah, service. The board, yeah. yeah, that was before you were on the board. No, I, that was distributed to the BGA members when we when we got it because it was essentially the, the minutes of the mm -hmm. of the meeting. I think that I still have a copy of it. Um, I hope so. Well, but if it's if it was email, yeah, no, it, it, it should ever disappear. I guess what I'm asking is. Would the transcript be public? Oh, yeah. Sure. I mean, should we make it available in public? 
don't make an effort to publicize it. If they don't, publicize if they don't know it exists, to. then they don't know to ask for it. Um, well, you, you, you'd be surprised who knows to ask for it. But um, I mean, I've already been asked for copies of the written testimony from a television station, for example. Uh, but no, I have no one has asked me for the transcript. Uh, but everybody at the meeting knew that the, it was being transcribed because that was something else that was kind of arranged by the. Jen Huber, the attorney, was that the, that the uh, woman doing the transcribing was also going to issue the oaths. I don't quite understand why that was, but that's... Yeah, I thought I kept seeing her push something, but I guess it wasn't a Well, she had a computer in front of her. She didn't have a, you know, a... She, well, might, she didn't she, have a little thing. Have I, well, I didn't that. see it. I don't know how big it is mm -hmm. or whatever. I, you know, I'm here and, and you're over there with a, something between us. Could but, be the same keyboard as the old... I, you know, I honestly don't think. Uh, I think I saw her typing. Oh. I saw her. So why don't they rely on audio recording since we no longer? Well, she does. She she's doing it physically. She's not well, audio recording it. But I mean, I because I, my understanding is that the advantage of having a transcript is that the person transcribing the meeting, if they don't hear something clearly. If more than one person is talking, they can say, stop. You know, I need to get this clear. I need to get it clarified. You can't do that with an audio recording. It's, you know, it's going to be a jumble if there's a jumble. Mm -hmm. um, but that's the only thing that, that comes to my mind as the difference between the two. Um, you know, I don't know if, if it's a tradition in courts that this hasn't caught up with technology or if there's you know, other legal reasons to do it that way, other than what I just told you. Yeah, and I mean, they're, they're certified as being, you know, a, 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 a legal... Yeah, yeah even, even if I could take shorthand, you know, I, yeah. it's good at it. I couldn't make an tra official transcript. Mm -hmm. And the same, and so maybe that's it. Maybe if, if, if she was certified, she could bring the equipment to do a recorder and, and certify it somehow, but uh, I don't think that's how it works. Mm -hmm. But yes, it's a, it's a, a system. Mm -hmm. Anything else for Richard? Um, um, yeah, I happily came upon um, Miami Township Zoning Commission minutes that I didn't even know existed when we were writing mm -hmm. a check to them. <laughs> oh, for the, to, to the, to the minute taker? Yeah, and I wondered if they exist in a file someplace or what, where they go if but they come in to the, us. In the old office, they were all in a binder sitting on the same table as, as all the mail. Mm -hmm. I don't know where they are now. Okay. I'll take it upon myself to well, go back. Well, they'll that, come across that the That binder's still there, so. Did, did, did. Show me where it is and I'll just make sure it gets in there. Okay. Um, I have to bring up that I was reading through it, and um, I noticed that in the March meeting, there was, um, let's see, discussion, you made a motion to delete this section on temporary use. That the, 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 the very I one. didn't make a motion. Let's, <laughs> let's get this straight. Motion <laughs> turned their attention to search. Mr. Zopf, oh, upon a motion by Corey Schrader. Right, of course because you're not a commission member. Um, and as unanimously, unanimously voted to delete the sections 18.5.1 and 5.2. It's odd that's, a, that's the, very, the very one that this... Yeah, actually, I, 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 I realized, okay, yeah, I wasn't here to report on that meeting, so I can report. That meeting was pretty much taken up by looking at that and saying, I think they started out talking about well, let's define temporary. And then they were looking at it and saying, well, maybe this isn't where it belongs in the code and, and you know, different things need to happen. And after they discussed for an hour, they said, no, it just, we can't see a reason to have it. To have? Have a temporary use variance. So we've had it all along, 
It's been in our and, code and they, for as long as I've been administering the code. I don't know if it's in the original document. I'd have to go back and get out and find a copy of the original document. What I did do when they, they said they were interested in discussing this was look at some other zoning codes in the townships here in Greene County. And, I, and let me say, having been a, a zoning administrator, it is not simple to say that something doesn't exist in the zoning code because there are so many different places that things reside. But I did not find similar language. We were looking for, well, how does somebody else handle this and, and have clearer language? Um, and I did not find other examples in here in Green County of the zoning codes I looked at. And I looked at most of them. Um, the, the issue here, and we have this so often, is someone puts in a word like temporary. And everybody has a different idea about what temporary means. That's for sure. Okay? And, and so it, then it becomes extremely subjective for the BZA because they have almost no guidance about, you know, in terms of what the code says, what to do. So where did the well, one year thing part come from then? What did, the one year? The one year is in the code. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's that's the, that's it's the longest a temporary exemption can be okay. issued for. It says cannot put up any more structures, cannot last for more than 12 months, and it's subject to public health and safety and convenience of general welfare. Right. Um, that seems pretty specific. No, no, it is. But the question is, and, and this is the example that we just had, all right, you have it for a year. Can you come back and do it for another year? Is that temporary again? You're doing it. I mean, not that these shows have ever run continuously for 12 months, but they did a full 12 month of requests, all right, and have come back, not for a full 12 months, but, you know, for another period of time beyond the 12 months that they were already granted. And so that, that's, a, I mean, that's another issue. Um, it's, it's not one that it's easy to answer, but it seems to me it's a legitimate question. So, you know, it's suppose, been in the code all along. Nobody's used it but once, and that was where it. Yep. And no, and I know, considering. No, I and I can say quite honestly, it's the last thing on the last page of the code, except for cellular towers. After that, and in you know, I I had DZA hearings on the, the three traditional things, and you know, uh, appeal of a, a decision, interpretation of the code variances of conditional uses for and you know and right there at, in the in the variance section it says no variances shall be granted for a change of use in other words you can't do that yeah. and then whoops on this last page there's an exception so to speak but if it's temporary you can do it so that was that was honestly a surprise to me uh, and but when I look at those other conditions <coughs> Health, you know, health, safety, welfare, whatever. The, there's some question about whether the health, safety, and welfare of some township residents are being compromised by granting that temporary use. And so that is why, you know, one or two hearings back I said that, you know, it seems to me that there need to be, you know, unusual, special something, what's the reason for giving this, this variance if it does not quite meet all those qualifications. And that, you know, that was contested in the newspaper, not at a hearing. Um, of course, we made the case that his use of agriculture in the shows hadn't take any agriculture out of production. And you said That's we not true. change the use. When, when I first met with him, he explained to me that he used to raise, um, I forget, was squash or pumpkins or something on part of the land where, you know, he was now using it for parking or, or whatever. It's not a big change. But the portion of the property where he's holding the hearings isn't row crop. Okay? But agriculture includes forestry in this state. All right? Um, other activities. The, 
No, I would not say that the shows have significantly compromised uh, agricultural production in, in green town. Or even on I mean, well, you know, I, I said significantly. I can't say flat out. I mean, based on what he told me, that he hasn't changed his production, but he was only cropping part of the property. And he said ten years. Because he's got a floodplain. He's got a certain amount of floodplain and, and a certain amount of woods, and he's got a house. There are lots of other uses on the property. Okay? Um, I'm not sure why this is relevant. I'm going to say, I was just going to say, because of the perhaps unfortunate precedent that we, the BZA, have set on these three decisions for state works property. Four decisions. You, four, oh, four? We're up to four, yeah. Three, okay. Um, if the voting commission decides to yank this section of the code all together, uh, that sounds to me like something the Lord is looking at. Because... Like, so please say that again. It sounds I like... Says, something a, your lawyer should look at. Because I could just see a, <laughs> there, that, the other side say, they changed this code just to discriminate against us because we used these exceptions. Well, many laws are changed because of experience. True, and I'm not, I'm not saying no, don't do it. I'm just saying that was a red flag in my mind. Barbara, I had exactly the same one, so what I'm saying. <laughs> Marilyn, do you have any other questions for Richard? No. Thank you. Um, this one Except other thing. for how his friends. <laughs> okay, I'll answer that one as soon as I get this up. Oh, yeah, um, the camera, so. uh, a couple of just thank yous. Don uh, made sure that there was traffic control. Having these meetings these days isn't, isn't simple. Uh, Dan helped me get enough chairs to fill up this room. It wasn't quite packed. It was, was full, but it wasn't overflowing. We didn't have any, any difficulties in, in that respect. Um, and uh, the fire department set up the whole room for us this, this time around. Uh, so uh, uh, the labor keeps shifting around about what, what needs to get done, but it, I appreciate the, the team spirit in, in hosting these meetings. Uh, France, as, I, as I, I've got kind of a stock answer because this gets asked quite a lot. You know, I, I go to visit my daughter and, and son-in-law and two granddaughters, and it's spending time with my family is why I go. I'm not really a tourist. Not that I'm not in a lovely city with lots of interesting things going on, and that, for example, all Mon and I got on bicycles and and went to a, a exhibition about the, the manufacture of building materials in the Paris vicinity, which include quarrying of stone, both by traditional methods and modern methods, and some interesting things there. Um, the other side of the trip was the traveling was the worst I've ever encountered. And I've made this trip at least 10 times, no, more than 10 times. Um, you know. These things happen, so to speak. My flight from Atlanta to Paris was delayed five hours, but only one hour at a time. So you had to sit there each time, you know, to find out that it's delayed again. And this was going from 10 o'clock at night till three in the morning. So, and then, and then you get on the plane and they want to serve you dinner. But the other one was that they're, they're Delta had a great deal of trouble keeping all of their representatives clear on what paperwork was needed and what wasn't and what were the procedures for various aspects of monitoring what needs to be monitored for the pandemic. Um, and I spent literally hours, maybe filled up some of that time in the airport, trying to get all of that straight because they were telling me, you won't be able to come back to the United States if you don't have this. 
oh, well, it's nice to tell me now, <laughs> you know, about the fly and, and so forth and so on. So, and the last one is the, the food on the, on the flight was of half the quality that it was in the past. So, you know, airline flight was never great, but it, on international flights, it was usually reasonable. And, and this time it was, it was something else. So, that's the chatty answer. In the future, if, if we could attempt to try and not ask personal questions <laughs> or make personal responses okay. to personal questions, I, I appreciate it. I, not that it isn't great, but it's probably not quite as appropriate here as it might be after the meeting. Um, it won't be in the minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Barbara, did yes. you have anything that you wanted to add, subtract, multiply, or divide before we move on from zoning? Just to make sure, did I actually say the words, I'm sorry, for losing my temper? That's the big thing I wanted to say was, I'm sorry. Well, thank you very much for coming and taking your time to do it. Uh, as, as much as you're getting paid for that, that job, you know, yeah. probably <laughs> a, a little more than. And thanks for doing. Yes. Thanks for serving on the for sure. ZA. Um, and it was very interesting to hear all the other business. You know. I have before, but you know, it's good to get caught up. That reminds me, her resignation is, the yeah, equipment was final, and we're, we're going to need to mm -hmm. advertise for a, a new museum. Mm -hmm. Now, I have had one person call me and, and ask, how do you become a BZA member? And I told them, so, you know, that's, that's all I can, and you, you might luck into a new, a new member or a new potential member. Well, and I, I won't guarantee you know, that. L Linda lives next to Clifton, and maybe actually in Clifton, but I don't think so. No, she's not in there. Um, she I'm couldn't be a BCA member. If she I'm in active there. conversation with uh, Mayor Beery about membership on the cemetery board, and I'll add this to the conversation. He lives in Clifton. And you, the they're, not, they're not residents of. Um, they be outside. No, you don't have. You can. I'm, I'm oh, that's right. right. You can't. No, you can't. can't. Okay. Good point. Okay. Anything else? Let's move to new business. Don. Uh. Well, I have a string of things. Should I just? Dive in or list them first? Uh, dive in. Just to let everyone know that the Yellow Springs Development Corporation monthly meeting will be in this room tomorrow at 4.30. First in person in a while. Uh, nothing specific about it. But uh, I'm, I'm hoping, and I, we have talked about this, but I'm hoping that you can bring up or perhaps get closer to finding out Who's putting what levy on what ballot? That is when? a uh, tax calendar is a topic. Is okay. a report. I don't know how much there will be a discussion. Great. Well, as much as you can find out that. Well, as much as you can push to have that. Exception. Uh, in our correspondence, uh, Lee Sloan announced that he is shifting law firms. And. He's asked if we would uh, have him continue to represent uh, Miami Township and the Kingwood case before the Power Siding Board, uh, uh, even though he's switching to the Mc McMahon DeVillis firm. And I don't know if others have seen this, but yeah, we'll see. Uh, and he confirmed that the financial uh, limit, twenty-one thousand, you would still honor. I noticed there was another correspondence that was from him about uh, the OSPB there, something. Yes, has a June. That's my next. Point. Oh, okay, all right. I'm if sorry. There's, if there's please, nothing, please. but we we need to. Uh, we would need to authorize that. I'd entertain a motion to continue Lee Sloan's employment with Miami Township. 
uh, through the continuation or finish of the uh, Kingwood Solar Project at a very, hopefully, minimal expense. I, I, what are you going to do about that? I, uh, he, he said he would <laughs> stick to the limit. Right. Mm -hmm. So the, uh, the threat the limit now? So that motion should include the name of the firm, the new firm, McMahon to Gillis. Okay. All right. All right. I'll move oh, yeah, it. Yeah, right. We have a motion. We have a seconding for a discussion. Hearing none, may we vote, please. Ms. Moyer? Yes. Mr. Mucher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Okay. Uh, also, Lee Sloan. Uh, uh, clarifies last week, there were the last two uh, days of hearing before the Ohio Power Siding Board about the Kingwood Solar Project. And now, uh, June 13th is a deadline for initial post-hearing briefs. And then uh, July 22nd is the deadline for replies to those briefs. So that there will continue to be in writing some back and forths. Uh, the soonest we would then hear from the Power Siding Board would be August, and I'm not certain of this, but I think they may have a 90-day window there. Was it a request that you added something? I don't know, I think. Okay. Uh, check it. This is, this is to you, not to... Township. This yeah, is the one about um, the city of, um, Yeah, um, there must be another one that's in the correspondence. Okay, we'll check that. Okay. Anything else down on your list of nope. lists? Uh, Marilyn, anything you want to bring up in new business? Um, I have some ideas on how to make our we discussed this before, how to make our website more useful and um, available to people. And well, and, and very interesting that you bring that up because you are next on my list. And as chair, uh, I'll take this opportunity to say that since you've been on the board now for four months ish, uh -huh. um, if you feel comfortable. I would recommend that the board approve your getting with uh, Deb Slater and you know going over your ideas and seeing what she thinks can be done, you know, reasonably affordably. Uh, uh, you know, put together a, a, pro a, a proposal uh, with some you know with some financial information. To, to how much it would cost to number one do it, how much it would cost to number two um, keep it updated. If, yeah. if you if you don't feel like you would be doing the updating yourself, mm -hmm. um, so uh, if if that's amenable to you, um, and that was on your list. It was right there. <laughs> I, I would yeah. support that. All right, we have a support. I'll second it. Uh, any further discussion? Here, now maybe vote on her. New responsibility. New responsibility. She's going to be uh, a web or web. She's going to be website coordinator. Website. She's going to assemble a proposal. Here, so I yeah, was, I was I already giving just, a role. <laughs> just for interest, my my ideas are streamlined and no bells and whistles. Just utilitarian. I'm not trying to make a a Disney World of a, a website. It's, um, that will probably disappoint Deb that she can't get, you know. Well, I also really <coughs> into this, I have to talk to her too because she had an educated last time I talked to her. But if it is Disney World, we could sell tax-free bonds. Mm -hmm. right. She is, she indicated last time that she may be looking at semi-retirement. Yeah. So I did couldn't tell if she was trying to back away or. Yeah, I thought or she not. was retiring. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, so, so she's, I'll have that old frank discussion with her. She is going on vacation, like this week till the end of the month I believe. So you so might make an off. you might make an initial contact yeah. but, but uh, okay. obviously you're not gonna be available for much in depth work either right. until 
to the latter part of May or whatever. So um, it, it, that should work out just fine. I need the verbiage of the motion to be repeated because I'm kind of confused on who's doing what. I, I don't even know that it really needs to be a motion. You just, yeah, we, I know, so I don't know what's going on. No. Well, I know that Don okay. moved and Chris seconded to have to assign Maryland the res, uh, to come up with a website proposal. Redesign proposal, yeah. I mean, redesign. this could end up being yeah, some could cost money, fair amount of expense. I don't yeah. know. We don't I know. Don't know. Um, I don't know too, but you never um, know. So we're going to pay her to to redesign the website. We're not going to pay Maryland. <laughs> okay, see, so I'm, I'm not gonna, clear. We're going to pay Deb Slater, and, and with her guidance from Maryland as to what Maryland with her Maryland's ideas of what she wants. Okay. They'll put together a proposal. And you have a motion for that. Yep. I wonder how you well, would do look for it. I was look, working on that this week. I was looking at other townships websites and everything. Okay. Can I say it's a gift. <laughs> uh, you do you have do you have it well enough? Well, you know what? We can always change it if it's not right. Okay. Well, you'll see it in the minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So may we vote, please? <laughs> sure. May we vote? Wait, does Marilyn vote for herself? It, it, it. She doesn't um, get any compensation, it, it, so sure. Why are we voting? Because there's a, that's what it's I'm a saying, motion. there's a motion. Oh. Okay, sure, okay. Uh, Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Mutcher? Yes. Ms. Moyer? Yes. Okay, oh. yeah. I don't know. You could have stayed, but that's okay. Well, if I was being appointed to a board, I could vote on it. You would agree to it, but you wouldn't vote on it. Whatever. I'm staying. It's 7 o'clock. Any other new business? Yes? Uh, we have a couple little things. Just to let you know, after what, a couple years of um, construction or post-construction, uh, I have contracted with a service to power wash the entryway uh, to the building to try and get rid of the dirt that is permanently embedded there to maybe make it look a little more pleasant. Uh, I'm not doing it only for that one. They are, they are pow power washing the Grinnell Mill that same day. And I said, hey, as long as you're in the area <laughs> for 25 bucks, I figured, what the heck, give it a, give it a shot, see what comes up. I have a budget, indeed. Well, so uh, The last is, I noticed we received a request from, I think, Yellow Springs Foundation to uh, oh, to bring that up. Yes, make, uh, make new donations to rent relief. A rent relief fund project, and, and, then and it doesn't specify an amount. It came in Friday night at nine twelve, and I forgot to call her. Well, there's there's two things that that I'm thinking. One is I have a very distinct memory that legally we're not allowed to make contributions like that out of any other fund other than a CARES Act type of grant that we receive. Or ARP? ARP? No, we can't do it out of ARP. It's not, it's not qualified for that, I don't think. Okay. I, I don't believe. And even if it is, uh, two things, or the second thing is, uh, I think we have made substantial contributions to those sorts of projects uh, in the past when there was a definite need as a result of uh, coronavirus problems. but. I mean, in this, where we are now, I mean, people are begging for other people to go come to work and make money and pay their rents and utilities. I just don't really see substantial situations here. I may be wrong, but, you know, the, the unemployment rate is relatively zero, not really, I know, it's but 3.2 is supposedly the base you can't ever get below, and we're right about there. And it's not all for Intel engineers. It is for service industry, you know, the type of job that you can get. I believe, this is the last I've heard, there was a fair amount of work available in Yellow Springs in the service industry um, well, and, and others. I would like to find out more about what the village is doing, what they have on hand, uh, why they think there's a need, and discuss it at the next meeting. 
That's fine. Um, I'd be interested also because the village, to the to my knowledge, hasn't put in any money for that type of work. Well, yes, sir, the, there's a request from the Community Foundation mm -hmm. for us to put into a pool for what it's going to be, or is this a specific request? It's a specific request for us to put into the village's the homeless, the homeless foundation's uh, existing community. Uh, it's the one that Florence Rudolph Grant, Randolph, excuse me, oh, hello, runs through the through the police department. It has it has really. I don't know how much direct connection there is with Yell Springs Foundation, other than the foundation does finance it to a certain amount. But I don't think they are organizationally involved with it. I think it's an internal yellow so spring. Deciding who gets the police department. Yeah. The, I think, yeah. The foundation is asking for matching funds from both Yellow Springs and Miami Township. Would both of your organizations be able and willing to join the foundation to provide funding for rent relief through the current process? Mm -hmm. that Community way. outreach coordinator, that's of the village, recommends and the Yellow Springs credit union pays the landlord directly. Yeah, that's what that's a, that's the same operation that's been I, in, in existence. I, 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 I intend to bring it up again with more information. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And you may be right that, that it is that it doesn't fit anymore, but we'll see. Yeah. The original with the original ARPA funds, it fit. CARES Act funds, yes. The ARPA and CARES Act are two entirely different things. I know things. they're different, but I remember he was. Well, all the restrictions on ARPA have been removed. But, but I, I, I remember specifically for the, these types of things. I don't know okay. unless they were changed, but I'll, right. I'll reread it. I'd like to say one thing. The, the rent relief could be for people that couldn't be involved. I mean, there, there are, not everybody is an able body, you know. They could go down and, and, and sign up at one of the stores downtown that says help one. Um, I don't I don't know who they're they're subsidizing, but you know the they, you know you also read about the fact that people are jacking up rents. I've had two or three people tell me that their rents have you know have been raised because we've got a very competitive market at the at the present time. So I. You know, I think it's in. Yes, I I can't see. You know, I, I'm with you, Chris. That it's you know, why don't you earn some more money? Well, it's all not always that simple. I 100% I, I agree with you, Richard. But in theory, what I'm saying is I just don't see. It's our. No, no, and I'm not arguing that the townships should subsidize rent in, in yeah, Yellow Springs. Right. Because this is none of these are outside of Yellow Springs. Because we did this for thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. I mean, upwards of fifty plus thousand dollars we put into rent relief early in the okay. Columbus. From CARES, I thought it was. Yes, yeah. no, from the CARES Act. Thirty percent up to that type of thing. I think there were a couple other categories yeah. that made up to fifty thousand. But, but none of that money went to anyone outside of the village of Yellow Springs. So, Not sorry. that I don't con have concern about people in the village of Yellow Springs, but the village of Yellow Springs is a incorporated village, and they should be responsible. And so, this is specifically asking for the village, village people. No, it's act. Well, no, it would be applicable to anyone, uh, you know, in the township. But based on past experience, we, there has been no money distributed to any anyone outside of the municipal limits of the village of Yellow Springs. Any other new business? Or excuse me, any other old business? Any other business? Anyone? Anything? Okay. I would entertain a motion to adjourn. I so move. And I <laughs> well, second. <laughs> second. For a second there, I was worried. <laughs> 7 p.m. we're adjourned. Thank you. Thank you all for coming, Barbara. Thank you for coming.